just want to mention that uh, just as with mixed models, you can analyse normal data, non-normal data as repeated measures. There are adaptions available and you can to logistic regression, Poisson regression if you've ever done that, suitable for count data. Ordinal logistic regression is suitable for data of where you've got ordered categorical variables. And these are all types of generalised linear models. And just to kind of recap on what they are, if you've got normal data and you're fitting a sort of the ordinary mixed model, you could write in a fairly basic way your model like this. Your outcome is equal to some fixed effects, some random effects and an error term. But if it's non-normal, you can't sort of, the errors are not going to be normally distributed and you can write your model in a slightly different way. You can say that the outcome is equal to a vector of expected values plus an error term. But of course, it's not going to have a normal distribution. But you can relate these expected values to the effects you're fitted in the models by applying a transformation, which I've given as f here. And that transformation function is going to relate to the type of data. So for example, if it's logistic regression, there's a function known as the logit. For Poisson regression, you'd use the log. Ordinal logistic regression, it's the logit again, but there's different partitions of the data to take into account the ordinal nature of the categories. So I'll briefly look at an example of non-normal data, some repeated measures non-normal data. This is a clinical trial, this time, of um, a therapy for epilepsy. So there's an active therapy, and it's going to be compared to a placebo, where the patients sort of had tablets, but they didn't do anything. So there was a run-in period where the number of seizures was measured and then fortnightly post-week, post-treatment visits and the patients recorded how many seizures they had within each of these two-week periods. So the outcome is a number of seizures and this is obviously a count outcome so it does suggest that a Poisson distribution might be appropriate you might think, well, you could just log it and maybe just analyse that as normal data. But here, there were a lot of occurrences where patients had no seizures, so um, it wasn't ideal to take a log. You got a lot of values were just going to be the same. Because it suggests a Poisson distribution, we might then think, well, I'll do what's known as a general linear mix model. That's sort of a mix model for non-normal data, and we'll use a log link function. We'll assume that the errors have got a Poisson distribution, so we use the log link function. And the fixed effects in the model that we'll consider are going to be the number of seizures in the run-in period, we'll fit treatment time and the treatment by time interaction. And just as with that first clinical trial, and it's probably worth looking at different possible covariance structures. This is just a table of some of the different structures that were tried and the covariance patterns that resulted and the minus twice the log likelihood. So I won't go through all the different testing that was done to compare the models, but basically the most complicated model at the bottom, which had a general pattern, which has a different pair of correlations for each time point, and it's separate for the two treatment groups. We've got the placebo and the active treatment. This came out significantly better than the other five models, so it was selected as the best model to use. Although if you look at the actual treatment difference here, in the number of seizures, this is on the log scale, remember, there's nothing very different between the models. I think the standard error is maybe a bit higher in this one than the autoregressive. So it hasn't actually made much difference, but it's perhaps useful to make sure that we've allowed for the, the particular pattern of correlation that's occurring in these data. And we also found that it was different between the treatments and we've allowed for that. And perhaps if there was, I don't think there was a lot of missing data in this study, if it had been more, it might have made more, had more of an effect on the overall treatment effect. Of course, we want to check our residuals. When this was done, they didn't actually look very good. The distribution of residuals, there's a lot more sort of higher residuals on the positive side than on the negative side. This is the normal plot. That's not really a straight line. You can see the histogram's a bit skewed and shows up more clearly in the box plot. Although we went through finding our covariance pattern and everything, and, but when we came to check the residuals, 
even after normalising them, they weren't satisfactorily distributed. So this model didn't satisfy our assumptions after all. Although the pattern's not very good at all, it might be helpful to just take out the worst outlier and see what effect it has on the results. And when that was done, it had a big effect on the treatment difference. And it's a good thing that wasn't actually significant because it would have been a sort of erroneous value. It's dropped down quite a lot here. So if you imagine the standard error was a lot lower, you know, maybe about 0 0.3 three or something, that would have been significant, whereas this one wouldn't, and that's just after taking out one outlier. It hasn't had such a big effect on the covariances, but it does show that if your model assumptions are not satisfied, it can really affect your results. So what I went on and did in this case, I haven't sort of done this, won't show this now, is considered analysing the data as ordinal, so I categorised it into four different categories, roughly based on how many observations there were in different kind of bands of attack rates. This gave a much more satisfactory analysis and it was analysed using a mixed ordinal logistic regression model, which still didn't show any difference between the treatments, but um, it, I was satisfied it was an appropriate way to analyse the data. So that was a non-normal example. So in terms of software, this is just the same slide as I gave for the mixed model presentation a few weeks ago. And I've just highlighted some of the packages that are available freely in the Roslyn Institute that will do mixed models if you want to experiment with these. So SAS is quite a flexible package, reasonably, well I think it's reasonably easy to use. R is probably a more well-known popular package and it's freely available takes a little bit longer to learn than SAS, but if you already know R, there are some packages within it that will do um, mixed models, but they're not as sort of thorough and don't have as many options as SAS. Genstat also has some good mixed model software in it, but I think that's probably a less popular package than either R or SAS, but it's reasonably easy to use. And there are other packages that have to some degree some mixed models in them. I mean this MLWIN is more for social scientists and it sort of uses a different terminology for mixed models and in fact calls them multi-level models. I think SPSS is available, there's software for normal data only and same in Stata, although there's some kind of add-on facility I think for non-normal data.